Okay, I think we figured it out. It's going to take a second to start up here. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Full Media, Part 40 Story. In today's episode, we set out to add more energy scores to our energy chart. And we set out to look at what emotional and cognitive story do the sequences tell. And we worked some further with the chart. So we did indeed add emotive cognitive story titles to our score sections. And we came up with uh, insistent, pensive, listening, transforming and progressing, which you see over here in representative matching emotional colors. We also recorded it as a flying score diagram, which I'll show you in a second here. Then we worked a lot on the, uh, we kept working on our line diagram here. And we, our goal was to get an energy chart that looked more intuitively pleasing. And we added two more uh, scores to it. We added, we added uh, what we call the dyad melody illusion and we added uh, and that took a lot of time to add that. So what do we mean by that? We mean at the very end when we were listening to this we can hear a uh, especially here <laughs> It's much more noticeable. I'm going to bring this back down to something reasonable. It's much more noticeable if you solo the pianos. So that's an illusory melody it's coming because we're starting on a high g the piano is playing a high g and then uh, well the the melody is playing a g and then the arpeggio goes right into a d flat like that so we added that way over here uh, and it comes from the backbone and the arpeggios. We also added a figure direction. And what that means is that some of the figures, like this figure here, that's flat. It's steady. And then some figures go up and down. No, du, 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 two ups and then a down. So we went and added all those and ended up putting that into the chart. Now, the thing is, <laughs> we also tweaked our chart so that we could kind of qualitatively look at what makes the most difference. And we ended up only giving the, that thing a point one. But it turned out that this figure direction has a huge impact. If we if we double its weight, um, you can see qualitatively. Did I do it in the right place? I did. So I make it five. Oh, I lie. I tell a lie. Do it this way. If we take everything else out, This is what it looks like with nothing included qualitatively. So then we come in and say, well, let's show the figure backbone. And you get that, which is a pretty strong effect. Uh, then if you put in the arpeggio, uh, uh, arpeggio function here, you get that kind of effect. And that shows us the very pleasing triple triptych. Uh, now, if you take this out, it really exaggerates it and, and, and makes it almost too much. Now, the figure direction, then you got to look at the jaggy edges 
uh, on the different figures. You put that back in and it kind of smooths it out. So we basically ended up running through here and tweaking all these parameters because we said we don't want to change what it we don't want to change the score anymore. We we kind of like we kind of like how it sounds and we're and why isn't the figure why isn't the energy chart matching what we're hearing? And we figure well you're just giving too much weight to some of these factors. Now the the one thing we've never changed anywhere is the mezzo forte of the backbone, so we just left that as a zero. And the beauty of normalizing this chart is normally when you put one in here, you know, the whole chart jumps up and the, there's a new maximum and you lose track of what the effect was. But if you do that now, it just kind of scrunches, scrunches it around the middle, but you don't see any qualitative shape in the, uh, in the smoothness, the relative smoothness of the three parts. So anyway, we the introduction is now kind of smoothed out and kind of matches the energy of part one. Part two chugs along and then part three really has a dramatic drop and then a dramatic recovery. And again, we labeled these the first whole section. Th this is insistent in here, intro one. Then part one A is pensive and confiding. And then this is listening and uh, transforming and then this whole thing is progressing so it starts here and then it moves up and progresses so that's what we came up with so what we'll do the, the as we said we recorded a flying score version and we're debating which uh, to share we have open mic today but we kind of like how the open score came out I mean the flying score so We'll show you. We'll show you the end. We'll just we'll pick it up from. Let's let's pick it up where it leads into ooh, transforming here. Another thing we realized in working on this is, and it's especially noticeable from the single single page view, is that when you show all of the parts in the score, basically the bottom two lines are the theory lines because it shows what is the chord and what is the uh, chord function and what is the note and the note function. Whereas up here, um, these are just the the parts in contrabass, French horn, and, and grand piano playing the arpeggios. And as you may recall, we're, we're not using the, uh, the middle line anymore. So we realized that these are kind of the cognitive elements, and these are the emotive elements. And we kind of wrote that down here. We felt 
Theory lines are cognition, timbre lines are emotion. And another key thing was the interaction of the backbone melody and the arpeggios gave a second what we call illusion melody. So that concludes our stream for today. Our ideas for next time are to share the animations and our favorite to be determined. Thank you for your time, attention, interest, shout outs to Kappa Overload and Wire Sam for their comments during the stream. We look forward to seeing you next time, and as always, keep on streaming.